I'm Melissa Fuller with Shape of the City. I am out at beautiful Holmes Lake. I am with Melissa Kinsey. She is with Lincoln YMCA and Safe Kids Lincoln Lancaster County. And we are going to be talking about water safety, especially as it relates to kiddos. So let's talk about what are the key ages for kids and in terms of the ages we need to be worrying about for water safety. Great question. Ages one through four, uh, drowning is the number one um, reason for accidental death but at 14 and under, that's the second leading cause. And so water is everywhere, it's at home, it's in our neighborhoods, and we need to make sure that we keep kids safe. So what is it the parents need to be doing? They need to have a few layers of protection. First, they need to make sure that they're watching. Put the swimsuits on, put the phones down, and just have fun this summer. The second layer of protection is using life jackets. Uh, life jackets that are Coast Guard approved. There are so many things that are out there on the shelves of stores right now that um, are misleading and are unsafe. So if it blows up like a balloon, it's not safe. It's not intended to be a life-saving um, layer of protection for your kids. So a life jacket that's Coast Guard approved uh, is something that you should always have for those non-swimmers, even if they're around the water and not in it. Uh, then also just making sure that your kids are in swimming lessons. They can start as early as um, six months and go all the way through adults. And swimming lessons can teach kids to stop and wait for a parent. They can teach those kids how to turn over and float on their backs and get back to the side if they need help. But it does they're not going to be drown proof, but it does, like I said, give that layer of protection. How much water does it really take and where can these drownings happen? They can happen anywhere. Uh, the backyard pools is the number one place that uh, kids drown, but accidental deaths also happen in neighborhoods at lakes um, and waterways and even in buckets. And so it's really important for us to just be aware of water. Water can be fun, but we need to learn to be safe around it. So Melissa, are there any other things that people should be aware of just to make sure that the whole community can stay safe around the water? I think they need to remember that if they have a backyard pool, if it holds water, they need to make sure that they are constantly supervising it. When they're done with the pool, either empty the water or make sure it's covered and having those layers of protection, doors locked. Um, in the city of Lincoln, they do need to have a fence that is at least four feet high all the way around and self-locking gates. And we want to make sure that people have that extra layer so that it's not necessarily their kids, but neighbor kids that are curious. Uh, Kids are curious, they want to see what's going on, and, and that what, what leads to those accidental deaths. Summer is here, water is everywhere, and I guess the message is enjoy the water, but be safe? Exactly that. Be safe, have fun, uh, put those distractions down, enjoy your kids, enjoy summer. Uh, we don't want to scare you, we just want you to know those dangers, and, and be safe. Perfect, thank you so much. Thanks for having us. My name is Carl Dietrich and I'm an environmental health specialist with the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department. Having an above ground swimming pool is a great way to beat the summer heat. However, there are some important things to remember prior to purchasing one. Here in Lincoln, we have a city code that says any pool capable of holding more than 18 inches of water must have at least a four foot fence around it. However, if you have an above ground swimming pool with walls four feet or higher, then no fence is needed. This is because the four foot walls act as a barrier preventing any young children from entering the pool. For example, this pool would need a fence around it, while this pool would not need a fence around it. If a fence is needed, all gates and doors must be equipped with a self-closing and self-latching device. Finally, no matter what size above ground swimming pool you have, you must take out and store any access ladders when not in use. If you have any questions regarding residential pool fencing, please contact the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department at 402-441-8002. Help keep the kids in your neighborhood safe. Fence it. It's the law. Drowning can happen in an instant, anywhere there's water. Put down your phone and supervise your child. It could save their life. Make sure that your kids are always in view and they will have a great summer.
I'm here with Aylin Schwartz and we're here to talk about community crops and summer gardening. And we're here at an actual community gardening spot. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Yeah, this is our 46 and Pioneers garden. Um, it's been around for quite a long time. We have a large amount of plots. It's our biggest garden in the city. We have almost 150 plots here. And the way we kind of divvy up the plots is they're in 100 square foot sections and people apply to our program and then they can get a plot, up to four plots. So you could have up to 400 square feet here. And people do take advantage of the larger space. Okay, so community crops, super cool. How long has it been going for now? Um, community crops has been around since 2003. So we're celebrating our 15th year anniversary this year, which is very exciting. Um, and we have three main programs in our organization. Um, I'm an AmeriCorps member with the Community Garden Program, so we oversee and manage nine community gardens throughout the city. We also have a youth program that has gardens in eight schools across Lincoln. And we have a farm program that provides a growing farmers training program. And they also do the veggie van, which will start on June 7th at Health 360 and they have locally grown, um, natural, sustainable produce. So looking forward uh, in June and July, what should kind of an amateur or maybe mature farmer look for when they're starting to plant here? Uh, one of the biggest things, especially in the summer months, is the heat. It gets really hot and you want to make sure that your plants have enough water. And one of the best ways to do that is to mulch your garden. So use things like leaves, grass clippings, even wood chips. It helps retain moisture in the soil and reduces evaporation so your plants get all the water that they need. And also you can use drip irrigation, which is the most efficient way to get water to your plants as well. What are some tips you would give to me or give to our viewers who are not as into the gardening, but they want to get started? Um, if you find any seeds that just really pique your interest, definitely go for it. One of the biggest things people are afraid to plant a different varieties, but just see and try it out and see what happens, see what's acclimated to this climate and go with what works. If something doesn't come up, that's okay. Invariably, there will be something that will grow. So just go with that. Is there any plants and crops that grow a little bit better here already? Yeah, especially in the summer months, um, things like tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, cucumbers and zucchinis, it's the perfect time to start planting those now. Um, and you can plant those into June as well. You might just get a little bit of a later harvest, but um, you won't miss out on your favorite summer vegetables, maybe in August and September. That's so awesome. And then I've heard this thing that some plants um, have best friends, if that makes sense, and they grow really well when they're next to each other. Is there any plants that you know that are like that? Yeah, definitely. There's a famous one, it's called Carrots Love Tomatoes. So they grow really well together. They use a little bit different nutrients, so they're not stealing them from each other. And basil and tomatoes grow really well together as well. And they say that the basil improves the flavor of the tomatoes and other plants that it grows around as well. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, what doesn't grow so well here? In the summer, it's harder to grow things like lettuce. They're definitely cool weather crops. Um, and also herbs like cilantro will go to seed when the weather starts to get warmer. But there are lots of different kinds of greens that you can grow in the summer, like kale will produce more than enough greens for your salads and uh, cilantro seeds are also known as coriander so you can still use those in your dishes to flavor your food. But do you know any types of like soil differences and fertilizer the tips that we should know? Yeah so Nebraska is known for its heavy clay soil which can be very daunting for a new gardener but once again it's very important to mulch your soil because um, when clay soil is wet, it's a little bit looser. The beneficial organisms can help loosen the soil. So mulching is really important. And also using compost is really crucial as well. It's basically like nature's fertilizer. You just don't want to use too much of it because it can compromise the structure of the soil. So it's better to think about it like you're trying to inoculate the soil. So you can just really sprinkle your compost around, maybe 
dig it in a little bit and then water it because all those beneficial bacteria and nutrients that are in the compost will go into the soil and then the bacteria will proliferate so you don't have to worry about adding a ton of it because they multiply in the soil and then they can help improve the soil break it down loosen up the the clay soil that we have here okay and i know that this is something that everyone's going to want to know, but how do you deter little critters from getting and eating your crops? Uh, one of the best ways to do that is with different herbs, things like oregano, thyme, and lemon balm that have a strong scent, deter a lot of pests, bugs, and mammals like rabbits as well. Um, and a lot of gardeners swear by marigolds as well because their leaves have a really pungent smell. So they will plant it around tomatoes and other crops that are sensitive to pests to help deter them. And a lot of gardeners here will have the plastic forks with the tines facing outwards to help deter rabbits from eating their young plants. And then I'm really interested, what kind of crops do you see often grown here that might be a little unusual for kind of like people that think of uh, gardens as like just, you know, tomatoes and cucumbers? A lot of her gardeners really like to grow okra. It's a very culturally relevant food for a lot of our gardeners from other parts of the world. Something else that I see a lot is borage. People think of that as an herb. It's used for its edible flowers, but you can also eat the leaves and they have a mild cucumber taste. They're very refreshing, especially on hot days. What do you suggest for someone with not a lot of space, maybe someone with an apartment that uh, may not have a backyard? What do you suggest for them to do? One of the easiest things you can do in your apartment is grow herbs. Anything that you harvest the leaf from doesn't require full sun. So you can grow them in a sunny windowsill and use them as you need for cooking. Just snip off a little bit and put them in your dishes. Um, another really easy thing you can do is to grow microgreens. It doesn't take a lot of time or materials, and I can actually show you real quick. Awesome. Um, so just having a, a tray full of soil. Um, this is just a potting mix that I got at um, a home improvement store. Okay. And all you have to do is just sprinkle your seeds over. It doesn't matter how much or how thick. So those are some parsley seeds, and here's some lettuce seeds as well. These make really good microgreens. So you literally just sprinkle them on the soil, and then take a little homemade watering device like we have here, and just make sure you get the soil a little bit damp. You don't want to get it too wet, but just until it gets a little bit saturated, you can kind of see that nice dark color and just leave this in a spot with natural sunlight. It doesn't have to be full sun. And in a couple weeks, your plants will be a few inches tall and then you can just snip them off with scissors and add them to salads or just eat them by the handful as well. So cool, and then after you snip them off, they just keep growing, right? Um, they won't because it uses all the energy from the oh, seed yeah. to make the little sprout. But once you harvest them, you can just sprinkle more seeds on top and keep going. And this is something you can do year round. Yeah, absolutely. In the winter, in the summer, any time of year it works. What a great way to just get fresh greens into your diet at all times, right? Yeah, and they're really delicious too. They have a really sweet quality because they have all of those nutrients that they're going to be using to grow. So they're nutritious, they taste really good, and it's something you grew yourself. This is seriously amazing. Like there's so many different crops here. Yeah, it's really cool to see the different ways that people grow things. Um, and people should feel free to stop by and check out, see what people are growing, different techniques. Just don't pick anything because the produce is for the people who grow it. But you can get a lot of inspiration by uh, just coming and walking around. No kidding. And then uh, for more inspiration or maybe they want to get a plot, where would you recommend sending our viewers to? Um, we have applications available online at Community Crops. Org. And there's also more information about all our other programs we offer and we do have paper applications available in our office which is at 1301 South 11th Street on the corner of 11th and B. Okay thank you so much again this is truly amazing and it really inspires me and I'm really excited to go out and plant some herbs in my apartment now. Awesome thank you so much. What if you could add five years to your child's life and make your whole family healthier with simple changes? 
Partnership for Healthy Lincoln wants to help you and your family live longer, healthier lives. It's easier than you think. Take the dog for a walk. Play more and text a little less. Swap out a soda for water once a day. Keep fruits and veggies handy for snacking. For more ideas, visit HealthyLincoln.org. I am out at Pioneers Park with Brock Hanish. He's with the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department, and we're going to be talking more specifically about mosquitoes and ticks and all the things that we don't like to be bit by in the summertime. <laughs> so um, let's talk. What are the big? What's the big time of year that we obviously need to be worrying about fleas and ticks and mosquitoes and? Yeah. Okay. So particularly with ticks and mosquitoes, once the weather starts to get a little bit nicer, warmer outside, uh, precipitation, uh, more rain events start to occur, the habitat and food sources typically uptick and the mosquitoes and ticks are more, more likely to be in greater numbers. What are the diseases and illnesses that we need to be most concerned about that come from the bites? So primarily coming from mosquitoes that we are concerned about here in Nebraska would be West Nile virus. There are other viruses that can be um, carried by the mosquitoes, including uh, St. Louis encephalitis and lacrosse encephalitis, um, both of which um, are tested for in the mosquito pools that we collect here in Nebraska. There can be uh, Rocky Mountain spotted fever can be transmitted by ticks. Um, there's the two primary ticks that we've got here in Nebraska, which would be the Lone Star tick and also the American dog tick, both of which can carry tularemia. Um, as far as Lyme disease goes though, that's typically transmitted by the deer tick and usually not found in Nebraska. So are there some populations that are a little more susceptible to being um, bitten or reacting to some of these diseases? Yeah, definitely. As far as ticks and mosquitoes, individuals who are going to be spending a lot more time outdoors, um, out in the brush, similar to this, uh, tall grass, um, more in the country type setting, oftentimes they're going to be coming into contact with a lot more tick and mosquito species. Uh, as far as individuals who are uh, going to be more susceptible um, to the illness associated with uh, diseases carried by mosquitoes and ticks, individuals typically above the, year, the age 50 and those who are immunocompromised. Okay. Are there any things that we need to be concerned about in terms of our pets? Yes. Um, so many of the things that we can get from these vectors, so mosquitoes and ticks, uh, also our pets can get. Oftentimes they're not going to be quite as... Um, noticeable perhaps, um, other times they can be. So tick bite paralysis in your, in your dog, for instance, Lyme disease, uh, many of those things you're going to want to contact your veterinarian about to get a little bit more information on that. All right, so what are some things that we can do to help protect ourselves? Yeah, so prevention is key, primarily when we're talking about mosquitoes. Um, so around the household, beginning with, make sure that if you're going to be having your windows open to have the screens in good repair. If there are holes or tears, make sure that they're patched up so that we can actually keep the mosquitoes outside. Um, cleaning out your gutters is a good idea. Um, if there's stagnant water, uh, detritus, leaves that are in there, that can oftentimes be a breeding ground for mosquitoes as well as any type of container that might be out and around the house that would hold water. So you're going to want to dump any of these containers on a regular basis every so many days to make sure that it's not a good breeding ground for mosquitoes. Let's say I see standing water just amount, you know, just sitting there where I see it in the neighborhood. Is there anything that can be done? That's call? a great question. Yeah. You can definitely call Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department and file a, a standing water complaint whereby we'll work with the homeowner or property owner, owner to get rid of that standing water and potential mosquito harborage or uh, nesting. There are a lot of different types of sprays you, I feel like you see on the market, um, things like DEET or there are certain ones that people should be looking for when they go out? Yeah, um, so DEET up to 30 percent. DEET would um, be a, a good, uh, good idea to use. Um, so it would be more of a repellent. There are also natural type oils that individuals will use on occasion. And then when we get into as far as insecticides go, there are some certain insecticides that you can actually use that you can apply to your clothing, but you don't want to apply to your skin. And then you're definitely going to want to check all the labels, uh, make sure you're using them correctly. Dressing appropriately is one thing you can do right off the bat. Typically long sleeves, long pants, uh, tall socks are going to be a, a good option, even though it might not necessarily be the best option due to the heat. 
that's going to help reduce the potential for mosquito and tick bites. Depending upon what, the, what, acti what activity that they're partaking in and also the type of uh, repellent that you're using, you may need to reapply. They, they actually create uh, wipes and uh, with the state of Nebraska and Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department, we've been supplying wipes to the day camps that are put on by Parks and Rec here in Lincoln. They have a good chance of being bit in the summer. What should they look for to make sure this isn't just an average mosquito bite or what are the things they should look for and what should they do? Yeah, it's definitely a question for the healthcare provider, um, but off the bat, uh, typically you're gonna wanna make note of where you were bitten, um, then any type of flu-like symptoms, joint pain, um, fever that might be associated with it within days of being bit, if you're cognizant of when you were bit and taking care to note the days that have lapsed. But if you are feeling sick under the weather and you feel that it might be associated with a bite from some type of insect, it'd be best to contact your healthcare provider. What's going on locally in terms of monitoring um, mosquito activity or tick activity, especially through, say, the Lincoln-Lancaster County Health Department? Yeah, definitely. So Lincoln-Lancaster County Health Department, along with the state of Nebraska, has been conduct have been conducting surveillance um, for quite some time now, not only for West Nile virus, but we've also have some sentinel traps for mosquitoes that might be carrying Zika virus. We've got one right oh, here. Okay. So this is an example of one of the mosquito traps that we utilize during the summer to collect mosquitoes that eventually are sent to the lab and tested for West Nile virus, as well as a, a few other viral viruses. Um, as we see, I don't even explain this. Okay. Yes, yeah. So what we have here is this canister, which is actually a, a water jug that holds dry ice, which actually when it starts to sublimate yep, off gas, it's gonna give off CO2 gas, which is gonna be drawing in many of the mosquitoes. And when it's plugged in, we actually have a light and a fan to also bring mosquitoes closer to the light. And eventually the fan will push them down into this netting, into the little trap itself. So we put those out in the evening and we collect them the next morning so that we can see the mosquitoes that are out during uh, dusk and dawn. And then eventually we, we save them and send them to the lab for testing. This test, this, uh, this right here is a sentinel trap that we use. It's a different variety of trap, primarily used to trap 80s genus mosquitoes, which are the mosquitoes associated with the Zika. Luckily, we have not caught any, if uh, very many of those mosquitoes in Nebraska at all. So Zika as, at this point in time is not necessarily a concern from mosquitoes that you would be bitten from here in Nebraska. But once again, we're actually set, setting these traps to see and get a baseline of that genus or the, that particular type of mosquito. For our viewers, where can they go for more information on either bites or um, mosquitoes, ticks, whatever they may be concerned about? Yeah, you can definitely visit the Lincoln Lancaster County's Health Department's homepage, where you can go to the Nebraska Department of Health and Human Services homepage, the Nebraska Extension, or you could also go to resources such as the CDC um, and search for whatever you're looking for. Perfect. Thank you so much you for bet. coming outside and braving the <laughs> <laughs> braving the great outdoors. You bet. Thank Thanks. you. It's so great that the parks are tobacco-free zones now. I know it's so much cleaner and healthier for the kids. Yeah, yeah I agree. Excuse me, ma'am. Would you mind not smoking so close to the park? It's a tobacco-free playground. Thank you. Play cleaner. Play healthier. Play tobacco free. Play tobacco free. Summer is a busy time for everyone. I'm here with Melissa Lindenman, who is with Lincoln Parks and Recs, and she's going to talk to us about what they're having provided for us to do this summer. Melissa, so what are some of the activities going on? Well, Andrea, we are in full swing with Lincoln Park and Recreation. Our summer day camps have started for our youth. We have free programming through our Play in the Park series our Party in the Park series, which is including all of our cultural events and con free concerts, as well as golf. And just, it's a great time to get out and play in the parks. They're beautiful, um, they're fully planted, and it's just a wonderful time of year. The pools are open, so it's real busy for us as well. That's fantastic. Would you say that a lot of your activities are family-based? We have something for everyone. Um, 
from the very young to the young at heart. It's just a great time. There's um, great walking trails for adults to get out on, for families to bike on, um, free programming in our rec centers and in some of our um, parks all summer long for both youth and adults. And our summer day camps are a great place for kids to be every day of the summer. And what are some specific programs going on this summer that we're really excited yeah. about? We are continuing our um, Move More Lincoln Wellness Series, which is a partnership with the Community Health Endowment, as well as Aging Partners. Four days a week, um, we have free fitness classes at the Jane Snyder Trail Center down at 21st and P Street. Those are free drop-in classes, everything from Zumba to yoga, um, and then some feeling fit classes with aging partners. That's so much fun. Uh, what fitness level do you think these are for, mostly? They are geared for everyone. Um, for those that are just beginning or people that are experienced, they enjoy them. It's a chance to have different instructors. If you normally go to a yoga at another center, it's a chance to experience a new instructor. Um, we also will have our water fitness classes, which are returning, and we have um, throughout the week we'll have seven different classes at four different pools. Wow, okay, so what would your tips be for parents trying to get their kids more active this summer? Yeah. Um, our summer day camps, we still have some openings for those. Um, those are Monday through Friday. Most of them are open from 7 a.m. until 6 p.m. But then we also have our crunch and lunch program, which is at Peter Pan Park. That is a free program where kids can come have breakfast. They play fun, active games with our AmeriCorps members, and then they are served a hot lunch. Um, so it's a great program for kids to get up and do something and have fun. A great way to get kids active is to get the whole family involved and we have some great opportunities for that. Um, once a month we offer canoeing at Holmes Lake. It's the last Wednesday of the month from 5 to 7. It's free to come out and have a chance for your whole family to get in a canoe. We do some basic instruction to start with. We also have our nature center out at Pioneers Park. Um, they are open late on Tuesday nights. They're open until 8 o'clock and that is a great place to come and walk and enjoy nature as a family. We also will have some different family events coming up throughout the summer. The first one is our Pollinator on the Plaza event coming up on June 20th. And then we end our summer with um, Play in the Park, um, Lincoln Play Day at Woods Park. So some great ways for families to get involved. Okay, and with this hot summer coming up, there's also some cooler, refreshing ways to get the kids involved too, right? Yes, you cannot forget the pools in the summer. They're open and kids are enjoying it. Also, each of our pools have a different family night which for $9, the whole family gets in and can swim up until eight o'clock. Um, you can find information on our website for that. We also have teen splash nights, which are for middle school kids, and that's free for uh, middle school kids to come to the parks or to the pools and um, jump in, and those are part of the night splash series. So great ways for you to cool off in the hot summer. Okay, and you mentioned your website. Where can our viewers find more information? Yeah, you can find more information at parks.lincoln.ne.gov on our website. We also have social media where you can keep track of things that are coming throughout the summer, if things are canceled or any information. Thank you, Melissa. I'm so excited to get out and go to some of these parks and pools nights. Great. We have a wonderful park and rec um, department with great opportunities and we love to have the community come out and enjoy all the events and activities we have going on all summer. Shape of the City is dedicated to keeping Lincoln informed of health and wellness programs and events. Visit our calendar at lincoln.ne.gov, keyword wellness calendar. If you'd like to see your program or event covered, email us at lnktvhealth at lincoln.ne.gov.